All right, let's learn some trigonometry. Or algebra 3. Or precalculus. Okay, lesson number one. These are all the same thing. Trigonometry is algebra 3. Trig meaning 3, and onometry meaning the study of. So how do we best learn about the number 3? Well, it takes half a year of relearning algebra 2, half a year of learning about the unit circle, and four seconds looking at triangles. Makes you wonder why they call it trigonometry. Anyways, remember pi? Here's E, his brother. E is the only number n such that the sum of k n's is a fixed r, and the product of k n's is a maximum given this fixed r. Okay, maybe that was a lot to think about. This is what it means. Imagine a bank gives you 5% interest every year, which never happens anymore, but go with it. So they give you 5% once a year. It's slightly nicer to get 2.5% twice a year instead. It's slightly better than that to get 1.25% four times a year. And you know what's way better than all that? Getting a tiny little fraction of a percent all the time. Every single moment. So you just get infinite money, right? Wrong! Turns out this is equal to this. Nature's a strange beast. So now it's January in the school year, and we can finally learn about the unit circle, which is trigonometry at its core. Here's the unit circle. It's called a unit circle because its radius is 1, so the distance from the origin to any point on the perimeter of the circle is 1. INTRODUCING THETA! Don't be afraid, theta is just a variable like all the others, but instead of indicating how far to the right the point is, or how high up the point is, theta represents the distance rotated around the circle. Now, let's start at the point 1, 0 on the unit circle. There's nothing particularly interesting about the point 1, 0, except that the way that we decided to define trigonometric functions means that we have to start at 1, 0. You could start somewhere else, but then you'd have to change the way existing functions work. So, at the point 1, 0, you have rotated 0 degrees. At the point 0, 1, you have rotated 90 degrees. At the point negative 1, 0, you have rotated 180 degrees. At the point 0, negative 1, you have rotated 270 degrees. By the time you reach 360 degrees, you have rotated all the way back around to the original point 1, 0. Also, why are we using degrees? What's so cool about the number 360 anyways? Why don't we use a measurement that makes sense? Like the actual distance we've traveled along the circle. Well, it's a unit circle, and we know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So r is 1, so the distance to travel all the way around the unit circle is 2 pi. So I'm just going to write these down real quick. x equals cosine of theta, and y equals sine of theta. So the cosine of theta is quite literally the distance to the right when looking at a point on the perimeter of the circle. Similarly, sine of theta is the distance up. So at the very beginning, when theta is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, because the point is 1 unit to the right. And sine of 0 is 0, because the point is 0 units up or down. Here's a graph where one axis is theta, or the amount rotated, and the other is x, or the amount moved to the right. Let's just look at the cosine of theta for right now. As we begin to rotate, we're moving further to the left, so the cosine of theta is decreasing and then stops at zero once we've rotated pi over two, that's 90 degrees for all you're wondering. Then we move further to the left, so x decreases even further until it reaches negative one. Then we have nowhere to move but to the right, so it increases until it reaches zero, and then increases until it reaches one. And then we've reached the point where we started. So looking at this graph, this pattern you see here just repeats as you increase theta, again and again, forever. Let's look at the sine of theta. You start at a y of zero, then you move up and up and up until you reach one. Then you move back down until you reach zero, further down until you reach negative one, and finally back up to zero. Gee, this graph sure looks familiar. What if we just yanked it back by pi over two, or again, 90 degrees, and we see that these graphs are exactly the same. They're just shifted over a bit. In fact, sine of theta plus pi over two equals cosine of theta. Tangent of theta is just sine of theta over cosine of theta. But wait, if sine of theta is just y, and cosine of theta is just x, then tangent of theta is just y over x, which is slope. Tangent is just slope. Hey, remember in geometry how they very briefly taught you Sokotoa and how to memorize it? Well, now you don't need to memorize it. You can actually know why it's true. What if we picked a point and created a right angle by letting the x distance be one leg and the y distance be the other leg? Suddenly, the hypotenuse is just the radius of a unit circle, which is one. That means that sine of theta, opposite over hypotenuse, would be y over 1, or just y. Cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, would be x over 1, or just x. And tangent of theta, opposite over adjacent, would be y over x, also known as rise over run, also known as slope. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. Cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta. And cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent of theta. Now that I told you these, you never have to use them again. Instead, just work with sine, cosine, and tangent. Congratulations, you just learned all of trigonometry.